So let's talk about small groups. So small groups, this is such an essential thing, and the reason I like this is small groups are truly the Swiss army knife of youth ministry. Small groups are one of the things where I will talk to people and someone will come up to me and they'll say, Jonathan, I have a question. Um, I find that kids just are not growing like, you know, they should be growing. And what we be doing for more spiritual growth? And very often my answer will be like, well, are you just speaking at them? Or do you get an opportunity to help them digest and process and talk about it like in a small group format? Because I find for spiritual growth that that dialogue really helps. So I'll end up talking and using small groups as kind of a, this might be a good solution. But you know, I'll have somebody else come to me and say a totally different issue. Say, Jonathan, my kids just, they aren't really bonding together. I want something that's just going to kind of unify them and, and help them be able to know each other and grow together and get closer. And very often I'll be like, have you tried small groups? <laughs> because small groups is a spot where all of a sudden it's a safe place where people can share. And in fact, for some people, it's the first time they're actually heard by others. And so others will listen and go, oh, I actually like it. I didn't know I had something in common with that person. Same thing someone will come to me and say, my kids are just kind of their friends. They're on the edge. They don't connect. I wish they could connect more. I wish there was a place where they, and I grew up and be like, have you tried small groups? Again, small groups is one of those answers that, you know, man, I want to disciple kids. I really want to get adults connecting with kids, but I don't want enough adults to do it. I'm like, have you tried small groups? Because maybe you have one adult for every five kids. I'm sure that's not as good as one on one, but again, small groups is it. So it's funny, I just constantly find that small groups is an answer because small groups are a very effective tool. So let's talk a little bit about that. Let's talk about five essential tools when it comes to leading small groups. Because my guess is you probably are already sold on the fact that you like small groups. You think they're good. The question is, how can maybe we do it better? And if you are the leader of the group, you might be thinking, how can I help my leaders be better small group leaders? Because I mean, let's be honest, there's times that small groups are difficult. First time I ever left a small group, I was 19 years old. Um, I was volunteering for our, my youth pastor, and he basically did this talk on, I remember what the talk was, it was on Daniel. Daniel was resolving not to defile himself, you know, and deciding to eat the veggies instead of the snack. And he handed me a group of small group questions. He goes, there's your group. Go, go with it. No small group training, no hints, no nothing, just here's your questions. Good luck. You know, that was my training. So I went out, and here I am, a 19-year-old kid, probably a little cocky, and I was thinking, I got this, right? Beware of whatever you say, I got this, because it usually means something bad is about to happen. So I'm like, I got this. So I walk in, and I start, you know, and I look at the small groups, and the first question, he, these questions he gave me, the first question was all, as Daniel resolved to define himself, how do we also sometimes define, and I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no. So I like put the group on, like, okay, guys, you know, and I started talking. Now here's the funny thing. I find that no matter where I go, I see this. And honestly, I don't think it was my fault, because nobody told me I wasn't supposed to talk. I thought, I'm the leader, I'm gonna present my lesson to these poor kids who need my help. And every camp I speak at, they say, provide small group questions. I do, and I give them. And I walk around afterwards, they just heard me talk. And I walk around, and you know what I see? I see a group of small group people talk, uh, uh, sitting around, and they're all leaning on their elbow while one leader is doing what? Talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. It happens all the time. When I was 19 years old, I was talking, and all of a sudden, I kind of had this reality check. I look around, and all my kids are bored out of their mind. One kid was looking at the hair on his knuckles. And I'm like, I am more boring than hair on knuckles. I mean, this is, this is a new love. So I made my mind go, oh, what is wrong? And also, I remember like going to like a new specialist or something, something here to go or something, and oh, that's not what small groups are supposed to be. So let's look at some effective tools that help us so that when it comes to kind of provoking discussion in a small group format, what are some things that can actually help us? So if you write these down, number one, the first tool I want to give you is duct tape. And this is by far 
the most effective tool you can give your other fellow leaders uh, is a roll of duct tape. And what you do with it is you just place it right over the leader's mouth, right there. That's what you do. Because what we need to remember is that small groups are a place for dialogue, not monologue. As a matter of fact, most good training ministries that do small groups, I think of precepts, my wife has brought precepts to our church and she's uh, a small group leader at precepts for those who there. And the one thing you come over and over again is you are not a small group leader, you are a facilitator. That's what they always say, you're a facilitator. So maybe we're even using the wrong word, maybe we should say a discussion facilitator because what happens is we want to create dialogue. As a matter of fact, we're hoping that basically we can open up a dialogue, helping them process what they just learned. If you were just in my last session, we talked about using small groups. We talked about uh, some of us don't have the speaking gift, so it's neat to be able to share a testimony, share a story, go, let's bring up small groups. Well, the good thing is now we want them to process what they heard and talk about it. Because think about it, kids are different types of learners. Some of them, they just heard blah, 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 blah. For them, a lot of them almost have to think out loud and talk and process. And this is a format where we can allow them to do that. Um, think of what kids hear every day from adults. I mean, they just hear all these commands of all this stuff to do. And sadly, most kids will say that there's not a lot of adults who just want to sit down and listen to them. My daughter is 22 years old. She's an intern at her church in Southern California for youth ministry, and she's looking at becoming a youth pastor. Um, and she's going to be phenomenal. And it was funny, we were talking actually about parenting, and I was asking her stuff like, hey, what do you wish we would have done differently? So we always try to dialogue about that. We were driving from SoCal to NorCal, seven hour drive, so we were just talking about all kinds of stuff. And she goes, honestly, she goes, when I was in high school, she goes, I was just looking for someone to talk to, and she goes, you know, I'm great, I mean, I knew I could talk to you, but she goes, you know, there's some things that you're, like, scared to tell your parents, and she goes, the first time she names her youth pastor's wife, uh, uh, the, the youth pastor's wife, she goes, when she connected with me, she goes, I probably scared her to death, because I was just like, Bleh! she goes, I was so happy to have someone that took an interest in me, and was ready to listen to me, and she goes, I know that young people have got to feel like the way I did. And she goes, and I want to be that for young people today. And so she's now a small group leader at her church. And I'm so excited for her because she realized that small groups is a place where she goes, now I can tell them a few things. She's like, no, no, we can, you know, I can be that listening ear. I can help dialogue. And that's why we need to remember this very important first tool, which is duct tape, because so many of us fall into that rut, that trap of, <coughs> Talk, 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 talk. When really, a lot of kids want to be heard. They don't want to do any more listening, especially as most small groups are usually after they already sat there one talk. Now they're like, now I'm another talk. Oh my goodness. You know? And they already have this short attention span. So remember this tool of duct tape. But I also like tool number two. And tool number two is what I call the conch. And I'm, of course, stealing this from the book that many of us were forced to read in high school. What book am I talking about? Come on, The Conch. You guys remember? Lord of the Flies. Piggy, yes, exactly. Yeah, Lord of the Flies. And this is where a bunch of young kids crash on them, and English teachers love to give us this stuff, and, and a bunch of kids crash on them, there's no adults around, and it's pure chaos. So you guys are like, that's my middle school small group. <laughs> pure chaos. It's Lord of the Flies. Literally, it's crazy. Well, maybe you want the conch, and maybe your leaders want the conch. What the conch is, is in the book. Finally, a kid picked up the conch and said, okay, this is too chaotic. Whoever has the conch speaks. And literally, they would pass the conch, and whoever wanted to talk had to have the conch in your hand. Well, with middle school groups, you could do that. All we're talking about is giving everybody a chance to speak. We're giving everyone, not just the leader, but everyone a chance to speak. Um, so think of what that looks like in your group. Maybe you're one of those small groups that's in a living room. By the way, some people always ask me, well, Jonathan, what is a small group? Is a small group something at the church that's like a cell group where you go with some house and that's, a, that's an official small group where there's one training I went? Or is it, what if we're, you know, just doing a youth group talk and we divide into groups real quick? Is that a small group? Or what if we go to the church, we start and then we meet for an hour and divide and 
You guys, all those can be small groups. Small groups is usually a, a time to get together, <coughs> process something, get to know each other a little better, give everybody a chance to be heard. So it's a loose definition. People always say, Jonathan, what's the perfect small group size? I think it's good in single digits. Once you get into double digits, the bigger it is, the less intimate it is. I think the perfect small group is five to eight kids. I love it nice and small because kids are more open to share because the more kids you have, the more chance there's some kid that makes them feel a little bit pressured or silenced or whatever. So if you're in that format, whatever it looks like, we need to somehow give everyone a chance to be heard. And the conch does that so effectively because basically the conch is something as simple as maybe with middle school kids, it's having a physical, like Nerf football, guys, and say, okay, I've got the Nerf football. Whoever's got the football speaks. If you don't have the football, you don't speak. I'm going to start. Uh, let's all share our theme and our favorite kind of pizza. I'm Jonathan, and Giordano's is by far the best, yes. no matter how good the Malani's and Gino's is. Okay, next. You know, and you go over there, and, and the next person goes, oh, okay, I'm Brian, and uh, definitely the Taco Bell Ultra Chorito, Intorito, Burrito, Burrito, Supreme, you know, Supreme with extra cheese. You know, all right, good, Brian, good, the next person. And you pass this thing on. You don't have to do that. You don't actually have to have a physical con. But you want something that creates order. Um, and it's basically, one of the things this really does is this keeps that one teenager who is always monopolizing the conversation and talks so much, it keeps their big yapper shut. And more importantly, it gives that one kid who never gets a chance to talk an opportunity to be heard. I had this kid in my small group, his name was Tim. I had never heard his voice before. I had literally never heard his kid's voice. He was this little tiny kid, and finally he spoke for the first time. I'm like, and Tim, what's your name? Favorite kind of pizza. And he goes, uh, thank you. I'm Tim. And I'm like, thank you, Scotty McCreary. I mean, he's like sitting there, he's like, oh, I'm Tim, you know, with this and we're like, oh my gosh. And it was the first time I think everybody was like, oh, he speaks, you know? Because, and it's sad if you think about it. But very often, we're in groups where certain people just kind of, you know, maintain control. This gives us an opportunity to do that and, uh, and, and gives them an opportunity to be heard. Um, what, so if you don't use a physical conch, one thing you can use to create this order would be rules. Um, I actually, with middle school kids, often would have small group rules. And I'd say, hey, I only got two rules. Rule number one, only one person talks at a time. And rule number two, don't be a turd. Literally, I've, I've been having these rules for the last 15 years. Um, and uh, that covers it right there. I want people to know that when one hey, 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 Brian, Brian, Tim's talking. Note the booming voice. You know, okay, good, good. And then somebody's all like, oh, that's stupid. Hey, 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 you're being a turd. Don't be a turd, right? You know? Uh, I actually worked at campus ministry once, and I said, we only have one rule here. Respect. Now, and then I said, that means you go talking with somebody else talking, you know, go and I'm saying, well, you really use the respect. Whatever it is, you just want to go ahead and lay down the ground rules a little bit, and leaders need to do this. It's taking chaos and it's creating a little bit of order and a lot of leaders need that. How many of you guys have ever been in a group where it was just it was out of order? Right? How many of you guys have ever been in a group where one person talked way too much? How many of you been in a group where that was you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, it is so good to give a place where students feel noticed and heard. Um, so Jonathan, how do you get that quiet kid to actually open up? That's a great question, and that is small group tool number three. It is the question. A well-placed question. Small group tool number three is a well-placed question. Now, I know some of you guys might say, Jonathan, I I'm not really in charge of the questions. I don't write the questions. My youth pastor just hands them to me. Well, but if you are the leader here, you say, oh, okay, okay, this is important. This is me. Notice I started with a story about how my youth pastor handed me 
bad questions. Okay? So let's talk about questions. And here's what you're saying. Well, Jonathan, obviously a question is powerful, and I want to use it, but uh, do I really need it? I'm not the leader. I mean, I'm just, they just hand me questions. Well, let me ask you, let me ask you a question. Um, what, do you ever hang out with kids? I hope so. I hope the answer is, yeah, I, I you know, go to Starbucks and talk to kids, or I, I go to kids' games, or whatever. I hope there's times where you're hanging out with kids. There's going to be times where you're going to be sitting in a booth at Denny's, you know, or you're going to be at a Starbucks or something like that. And all of a sudden, there's just going to be kind of like this, hey, I'd love to get some conversation so kids don't automatically do this and start doing this, right? And so, so what a good way to do that is to be ready to have a good question. So always be on the look for a well-placed question to get um, discussion started. Because again, remember, we're trying to transform monologue into dialogue. We don't want to just sit there and start lecturing kids. When I was your age, blah, 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 right? We want to be able to talk with them and get them uh, talking. So we want to move from lecturing to listening. And the question helps us do this. You guys, I have to talk to parents about this all the time. And it's the exact same process. And here's the rules. If you want to come up with questions, you're saying, okay, Jonathan, okay, I, I, I get it. There's going to be times I'm going to need to come up with questions. The rule is simply this. If you're going to come up with a question, start light and then get deeper. Start light and then get deeper. Here's what I mean. Notice that when I said, I started my small group, I said, share your name and your favorite kind of pizza. I didn't say, share your name and the most recent sin you've committed, right? You know? <laughs> I literally met this one guy who's like, yeah, whenever I talk to you, I always, I always like to get straight to the issue. So I always go, okay, guys, how many guys are struggling with masturbation? He says, that's how he starts a small group. I'm like, so I give him the Dr. Phil. I'm like, how'd that go for you? He goes, oh, all the guys don't like to share, you know? And I'm, like, I'm like, well, yeah! I mean, you started with the doozy. I mean... Yeah, I'm not saying that if you don't want, if you're talking with, with young guys, you could get there. You could get to talking about that kind of temptation. I'm not saying that question's taboo, but just, whoa, you know, hello, right there, boom, you know. I mean, think about this a little bit. Maybe start light and get deeper. So think about that. So maybe when it comes, start light, begin with, ready, an easy question, and that way you can give everyone a chance to speak. Okay? Because think about this. If you give them an easy question, let's start again. Hey, say your name and your favorite food, period. How about this one? Uh, if you could buy any gadget right now, period, and it would be paid for, what gadget, what electronic device, what piece of technology would you get? Is a kid not going to answer that question? You know, I mean, give them a question that give everyone a chance to speak and also give them a question they can't be wrong. If you say, what did you think of the scripture when Paul said this? Why did he say that? Well, you're wrong! If you would have been listening, you would have found out. That, you know, so some of the kids were like, why, why did they talk? They were afraid of getting it wrong. Give a question they can't get wrong. If you say, what's your favorite piece of technology? The new iPhone 7. No, it's not! You know, you can't argue with that, right? No, you're giving them a question they can't be wrong. So, if Think about it. If you want them sharing, start with this nice, light question where they can't go wrong. Uh, here's some samples. Where would you go for a dream vacation? Um, what's your favorite restaurant? Um, what present do you want for your next birthday? If you could buy one brand new piece of technology, there we go. Took the guy. Anything. What would you choose? Um, and and if you're sitting there going, Jonathan, I, I don't even know, then you can go to a guy like me who's got books that he's written with thousands of questions. You know, and then you can help feed my children by buying this book. So please do. You know, uh, but here to your second. The first question in this book is: If you could text anyone in the world right now and you know they would reply, who would you text? And the cool thing is then go with some follow-up questions. What would you text them? What would you hope they reply? If you could text just one person for the next year, someone you already text, who would you choose? Look what we're doing with these questions. I'm actually starting from something. Fun and imaginative, but I'm getting a little deeper. If you could only text one person, question, who would you choose? Then you can say, why that person? Who, you know, and also, now you're finding out who's their best friend, who they spend a lot of time with, maybe on social media or texting or whatever. You know, you're starting because you started light and you're getting a little bit deeper. So, a good question will open up those doors of conversation. Um, 
gosh, I had a difficult task of talking with young people about social media. When I do that, it is, it's very difficult, and I tell parents all the time, uh, like in my book, The Teen's Guide to Social Media, at the end of each chapter, I put discussion questions. Um, and the reason why is like, uh, like for example, chapter three is all about nothing you post is temporary. And it's like, it starts by fact, I never wish you could unpost anything. And it talks about different things about what you post dating, and I share all these stories about it. Well, then I get to the small group questions, and check this out. Here's, here's a glimpse inside chapter three's uh, small group questions, because you can actually do it in a small group, or a parent could do this at breakfast with their kid. Number one, is sending news a common occurrence at your school or among young people in your area? Notice how I start with, hey, is this something you've seen other people do? I didn't start with, do you ever send inappropriate pictures? You know, you know that might be where we're going. As a matter of fact, number nine, do you need to make any adjustments in what you post? Good job. But that's how I get there. As sitting here in Congress at your school, have you ever known someone who said to receive a new pic? What happened? How often you encounter someone who never posted anything inappropriate? What do you think these, uh, why do you think these people aren't worried about these posts coming back to haunt them? What are some of the common ways you think inappropriate posts come back to haunt people? What advice does Peter give in this end book? There's a scripture we just went through about how we should live our lives. What does an honorable life, according to scripture, look like in social media today? We're getting into the scripture. How does living an honorable life silence accusers? And then finally, is there an adjustment you need to make with your posts, you sinner? You know, no, you didn't say that. But you know, the last one, do you need to make adjustments when you post? So you're finally getting there, um, but you started right and you're getting deeper. Now, sometimes you guys say, well, Jonathan, with questions, though, what do you do? Like, sometimes kids are all over the place. Kids, we'll be talking about our life, we live, whatever, and someone will be like, so, okay, so that's cool. We're talking about social media, what we post. Hey, my neighbor is Jewish. Is he going to hell? And you're like, well, since we're all on topic here, uh, that's a good question, Michael. What do you do? Well, I'll tell you, when it comes to that, one of the hints that I've always liked is use what Jesus did. Um, answer a question with a question. Jesus did that all the time. And sometimes if I'm stumped as a parent, I'll be like, well, what do you think? Or Jesus would say this. What do the scriptures say? Remember? You know, who is my neighbor? Well, what do the scriptures say? You know, or uh, the rich young ruler came up and said, uh, how, can I in, uh, how can I inherit eternal life? I think we're his words, depending on the birth. And Jesus goes, well, what's the Bible say? Because well, it says do this, this, and this. You know, I've done these my whole life. Jesus goes, oh, okay, that's really cool. I'll go celebrate. Anyway, but you know, but, but, but he started by saying, well, what does the Bible say? It gave him time to think because Jesus needed time to think. So the thing is, for us, sometimes if we get that, answer a question with a question. And don't be afraid to say, that's a great question, Brianna. But you know what? We're talking about social media right now. Let's you and I go to ice cream later this week and let's talk about it. Anybody else wants to come? We do that. We'll do that Thursday night. We're on just Thursday night. Now you just got an ice cream team with three kids, which is great because you love ice cream. No, because you get to hang out with three kids. So, um, so that's the thought. But the main thing is, you guys, what we want to do is we want to constantly be able to have these helping questions, which um, help start the conversation. Um, speaking of starting a conversation, let me give you uh, tool number four. And tool number four is what I call the springboard. And the springboard is simply um, a thought provoker. Um, it's something that gets kids thinking and talking. And we encounter springboards every day. Springboards are something that makes kids go, hey, whoa, and then it's kind of like, it, it kind of, you know, jostles their mind a little bit. Let me uh, show you an example of a springboard. Why do I have three Super Bowl rings? And, and still think there's something greater out there for me. I mean, maybe a lot of people would say, hey man, this is what it is. I reach my goal and dream. My life is I mean, that, thank God. It's got to be more than this. What's the answer? Wish I knew. Wish I knew. Now I'll tell you, when I encountered that, which was like about 16 Super Bowl rings ago, um, the, uh, you know, I remember thinking, Wow, the devil himself is actually interesting. No, I'm just kidding. No, I remember thinking that, uh, sorry, I'm a Broncos fan. Uh, the, uh, you know, when I saw that, I was like, wow. I, there's so many times where you'll hear a celebrity say something about, like, 
that they're looking for an answer. And if they only know, if they can only find it. And I love when they see something like that, those are great things to show and then um, start a conversation with it. Because he's talking about, I mean, think about that. He goes, why do I have all these rings? Everything's been great for me. I married a you know, supermodel. And yet I still feel like there's something missing. Dun, dun, dun. Who we were just in the, uh, the talk session I did. Well, let me share with you Matthew 7, this story about a guy who built his house on the wrong, you know, anywhere. And you could go right there, you know. But great um, kind of thought from a great, great, um, uh, you know, springboard for discussion. Don't be afraid to use something controversial. Um, research actually shows that if we never stretch our kids' minds, that they are actually less resistant um, to drugs and alcohol and making good decisions. We're just always like, just get my hands off, as parents. Um, and I've seen that research, it's kind of crazy. They're saying, disagree with your, uh, Disagreeing with teens help compare them to the real world. So if your teenager actually says, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. If parents are constantly like, well, you better agree with everything I said, you know. Um, it'd be better to say, well, good, well, state your opinion. What do you think? You know, and be able to ask that. So there's times where we can sometimes throw out them and ask them what they think. I'll give you an example. Um, I was driving down the road with my daughters, and I had just seen a couple years ago this guy on Facebook, who was his dad, who was so upset with his daughter because his daughter posted some bad stuff about the family on Facebook, that this dad decided that he would solve it his own way. So he hacks into his daughter's Facebook account and he posts a video. Uh, here's just a snippet of that video. Ridiculous. Not disrespectful to me, your mother, your stepmother, your family, your friends, and yourself. So I'll, I'll put a stop to it. I'm going to stop it right now. That right there is your laptop. You see, it's out here on the ground. This right here is my 45. That was the first round. These are exploding hollow point rounds. <laughs> so, um, I'm driving down the road with my daughters and I say, uh, and we are picking up from somewhere we like this half hour drive. And as I'm driving, I said, hey, have you guys seen that video that just went viral? Um, this is the dad, he got upset with his daughter, and his daughter posted something, so he got mad and he pulled it down. They're like, no, 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 no. And Ashley immediately, my younger, she's all, oh, I got it, I got it right here. I mean, I'm just from what I, my description, she's all, yes, redneck dad gets mad and she's all that. Boom. And so she plugs it into the car's audio, and we're driving down in our little Nissan Tetra. It's plugged in, and we're all listening into it now throughout the central speakers. And we're all listening, and the girls are laughing. And when it gets that, they're laughing. So the laughing all ends, and I said the most brilliant thing I've ever said in my life. Yeah, it was by accident. But I said three words. When it was done, I said, was he right? That's all I said. I just asked that question. Was he right? One of my daughters, I'll tell you which one for their protection, um, says, oh, yeah, of course, you can tell that the daughter was doing this, this, and this, and obviously she was acting up, and she, you know, you know, oh, absolutely, it was correct. And the other daughter goes, what video did you just see? <laughs> obviously, the reason the daughter's acting up is because she has a dad that shoots laptops. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason she's doing it is this, it was the dad did that. And the daughter's all, no, 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 and Lily Davis is like, no, 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 and they're just, they're, you know, they're, you know, back and forth, arguing about proper parenting. And they're like in high school. Every once in a while will die down. I'm like, now, well, what if your mother or I? And they're like, no, 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 I probably said all of three or four sentences and for a half an hour they debated. And I'm like, well, what would be a good boundary then for, you know, I've asked questions like that. Oh, we can't do that. No, 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 you got that. Well, no, it's fair. And literally this huge discussion about what are good parental boundaries. And all I did was show a video of a crazy redneck dad and say, was he right? And you know what? Life is full of examples. And, and, and in a world right now where young people are just absolutely captivated by all kinds of different stuff, every once in a while, maybe one of the better questions we can ask for the song that they're listening to on Spotify that's on top of the charts like from this guy, because he's all over the charts right now. He's literally over half the songs in the top 40. 
So if you sit there and we follow across his song, like here's his song, Emotionless, and I know I've got such a small screen, but here's what it says. He goes, I know a girl whose one goal was to visit Rome. Then she finally got to Rome, and all she did was post pictures for the people at home. Because all that mattered was impressing everybody she'd known. I know another girl who's crying out for help, but her latest caption is, leave me alone. I know a girl happily married until she puts down her phone. I know a girl that saves pictures from places she's flown to post it later and make it look like she's still on the go. Look at the way we live. Oh yeah, that's good stuff. Um, so the question is, can you take something like that? And who knows, let's say the kids are all talking about Drake. And maybe they're all getting out and they're all doing that dance, which right now it's viral. If your kids have been talking about, King, do you love me? King, and they're doing that and they're doing that and then they all immediately want to do the motion. No, no, the motions are like this. And they're doing the whole motions and everything like that. we got to take that off the camera. I can't dance. But anyway, do you know. Uh, and he said, go, that's funny, you know, and you go, it's interesting. You know, I just heard Drake say something later. And, and lately, and sure that. Well, what do you think he meant by that? Yeah. Well, is he right? Are there, do you know anybody like this? You know? Why would someone post pictures like this? Why would someone crying out for help say, leave me alone? You guys, we can sometimes, if our kids, and by the way, I'm not saying, you know, if you've got a youth group full of homeschool kids, you'd be like, okay, we're going to play Drake, all right? You're going to get fired, all right? I promise you, you know? But, but I'm just saying, if your kids are listening to Drake, and when my wife and I walked in here and walked out, there was kids listening to Drake in the aisle. I heard them listening to Drake, you know? Um, and so, you know, I love, and by the way, I used to, in youth group, one of my greatest tools was the Y Jack. And when we would sit, at my leaders, I gave them all Y Jacks. A single headphone going out to two headphones, right? I said, bring your headphones, and here's my gift to you, and I give them a wide And I told them, sit down the next kids, and go, hey, can I, next kid, go, hey, can I plug in with you? Now, here's the funny thing. I worked with uh, unchurched kids on uh, off campus with Youth for Christ for a decade. Youth for Christ kids were like, sure! You know? And I remember back then, it was all 50 Cent and all these guys like that. 50 Cent, I, I call them five times. But uh, uh, he uh, he used to, you know, and, and, he, and kids would be like, sure, listen. So I turn on 50 Cent, 50 Cent's on F and this, that, so many kids are like, you know. Now church kids, you know, can I play with you? They're like, oh, uh, no, actually, I'm really just worshiping on my own right now. <laughs> what are you listening to? Uh, Chris Tomlin? You know, so sometimes the church kids are a little more fake, okay? But it's a great tool to not correct them. What? You're listening to Cardi B, you know? She was a stripper, you know? You know, uh, but instead, to sit there and go, oh, Mr. Cardi B, let me hear. I'd love to hear about her. Huh? That's interesting. Is she right? You know, we can sometimes use controversy. And again, don't introduce them to things they haven't heard before. But if you notice them listening to something, um, I use controversy with my zombie apocalypse book. We talk about suicide, we talk about all this stuff, and I'm using the premise of a, of a zombie apocalypse. And it's so hilarious because I'll speak at churches and grandmas come up, and you know what this book is? This book is basically our daily bread for teenagers. It's literally story, scripture, discussion questions. It's the story of three teenagers whose parents aren't standing over their shoulder telling them what to do. And in every situation they get it, the question they're asking is, what's Right. So all this book does is it uses kind of almost controversial, hey, what do we do in this situation? There's a scene in this book, and, and it's probably like a Harry Potter level, but where the three teenagers wander into this compound where everything seems all good, but in the compound they're kind of getting drunk and they're partying and they're doing some inappropriate stuff. And they realize that to stay there, they would kind of get sucked into a bunch of this, a lot of these distractions. And they have to make a decision, well, wait, we're safe. Do we stay here where it's safe and we are going to have to do wrong things? Or do we do what's right? This is stuff that a lot of young people don't even think about these kind of things. And we need to look for opportunities to actually springboard them into conversations about truth. I promised you five. Let me give you one more. And this is for my wife. You can thank her for this. And the fifth small group tool is give them the reason. And uh, I told you I started working with Youth for Christ kids. Um, what I'm talking about here is when I start a small group, I always like to tell them why I'm there so they know. 
And when I worked with Youth for Christ, I used to let them know straight up because they were campus kids. Most of them didn't go to church. And I'm like, hey, just so you guys know, I'm here and all our leaders were here because uh, we care about you guys. And a lot of us, we made bad decisions when we were teenagers and we really want to get back to teenagers. I want you to know that every single one of my leaders and myself, we think a relationship with God is important. And sometimes when we're talking about these issues like anger or drugs or games, sometimes those discussions are going to lead to discussions about God because for us, God helped us out of many of those situations and of those elements. So we think that's important. But we're going to force you in that area. We just would like to share that with you. If that's something you're interested in, that's something that we sometimes can talk about right here. So I want you to know that in our small group, if we talk about God or Bible, we're just curious what your opinion is on that. And I let them know. And they were always like, okay, that's cool. And if I ever, actually, there was one kid who was kind of this atheist, and she goes, well, I'm an atheist. You know, I'm an atheist, right? And I said, that's cool. And I said, uh, that would be good for you to be able to, you know, if you talk, you want me to be able to listen to you, right? I said, good, so obviously you want to reciprocate, right? And in the same way, if I talked about God, then you'd be open to listen to what I have to say in the same way, right? She's like, oh, well, yeah, of course, of course. I said, well, good, well, this would be good. Then we'll be able to talk about this. Whenever we talk about Easter, you talk about the Easter Bunny, and I'll talk about Jesus, and let's each take notes, you know? Of that. That'd be great. And she's like, okay, it's good. It's good. You know, that's the agreement we make. And I think it's good in small groups to very often talk about why you're there. And um, honestly, I think everything we do in ministry is either outreach or discipleship. Outreach is basically connecting people who don't know Jesus and pointing them to Him. So, hey, you don't know God? I want to point you to God. Or discipleship, which is, hey, helping believers grow closer to Jesus and live more like Him. Most of what we do in ministry is going to probably fall into one of these two categories. And if I have a small group, I want to know what that is, and I always want to be able to sit down and say, hey, our purpose here, the reason we're here is if, uh, my wife said, with, uh, with, and it's so funny, she's led small groups into ministry for so many years, we've been in ministry for 25 years, and she's had countless small groups of girls, and then she started doing women ministry, and she didn't say it exactly like this, but I was laughing. She's like, yeah, basically it's the exact same thing. You know, basically women are the exact same as a team. No, uh, women's ministry. It's the exact same thing with women's ministry as it is with this. And she goes, you know, one of the things we do, conserving these precepts, which is this really inductive, deep Bible study, is she tells them right there. They even start off the group and say, hey, here's why we're here. We want to dig into the Word. We think the Word has really got great stuff to offer us in real life situations throughout the week. And so we think that this is some of those answers that maybe you're looking for him. And let's pray. And let's pray that God, you know, leads us through this so it'll be from him, not from us, as we open his word this week. She always starts off with the reason. And I think it's great in small groups to start off with that reason and let them know um, exactly what that is. Um, I want to open this up and for questions, just so you guys know. Um, if you guys ever uh, are looking for someone, I do more workshops um, because we're leaving as soon as the session is done. Um, if you're ever looking to bring um, a seminar to your church, I do these parenting and smartphone generation workshops. Um, if you want to get a sample of me talking about I'm actually going to be on uh, the day my bully, bully eating book comes out, which is I think November 1st. I'm going to get a focus on family so you could uh, have your pastor listen on there as I'm being interviewed about that and I've been on past shows where whatever too they get a sample of what that is. We do workshops for parents. We also do workshops for young people. This four conversations workshop is much like the one I talked to young people this morning, but this is parents and teenagers in the same room and we try to get them talking together about the friends you're friending, the picture posting, the screen down you're absorbing, the affirmation you're thinking. So I do these workshops as well. Um, and then I also have some books over here. Um, you can jump on Amazon, and Amazon, depending on the day, sometimes has cheaper, more expensive, whatever. I don't mind you guys buying it on Amazon. I think the books I had over there, half of Amazon had better, half of mine had better. So it kind of almost even out. But you can jump on the Amazon page. My bullying book comes out November 1. So if you want to jump on there, um, that's all about, uh, basically it's the premise of kids are either bullied, the bully, or a bystander, which kid is yours? And uh, talking about what we can do to help those kids. Um, I've also got that book with all the questions over there. I've got the book that helps uh, you talk to young people about sex. I've got this book that was for parents, but a lot of youth workers like it because it's about opening up arenas of conversations with kids who can't stop staring at their devices. 
So 52 ways to connect with your smartphone says kid. Um, so that would be a mentor pack. I sold two of the books already, so I've got those three that I'm selling for 30 bucks. Um, I've got kids' books for young people too, like this Teen Guide to Social Media, um, the Zombie Apocalypse Survival Guide, uh, the Guys Guide, which is a book for guys, to God, Girls, and Pony Pocket, and Sex Matters. And I've got that pack for just 30 bucks. Basically, you get the Sex Matters book for free. So if you want those, I've got those. Uh, questions, we finished, we flew through, so I want to get on time, we're supposed to be out at 1.30, sometimes you guys can learn the most from each other, so we've got five minutes left, I encourage you to hang just for a bit, any questions about this, leading small groups, um, getting kids talking, technology, my dog Lionel Richie, um, my cat Smokey Robinson, anything, any questions? I actually do like dogs and cats, you wouldn't know that from the last session, no, questions? Anything. How much do you charge for a workshop? Come talk with us because it depends where you live. If it's across the country, it's more because it takes me a day to get there, a day to, a day to get back. If you're in California, I'm going to come talk to us. Cheaper than the other guys that speak where I speak, more expensive than the youth pastor down the street, but will do it for free. <laughs> Like how do you train your youth leaders on this? Yeah, how do you, how do you like Yeah, you know what? I think it's good. And the one thing I try to do, and I don't know if I'm successful is, I try to make these points really memorable. So my hope would be that if you're in a band full of youth leaders, you can say, hey, I attend this session about small group tools. Here's one I really remember that it was a real help, the duct tape. And here's what he said, boom, and you share that one or something like that. You know, and you might even remember the conch too, because for a lot of youth leaders, that's that's oh I could use more. I just never know what to do. Is it okay to have rules or is, is it okay to use and, and maybe something like the duct tape or the conch would be something we need to share and go, I just learned and you know what I would do with them? I'd go, so he just shared this. And he said this is a good tool. I don't know. Is he right? Would this work? Would this help you? You know, and ask and see what they say, because then also now you're using controversy, you know, you're asking them a question and see if they think it would be helpful to actually get them talking. But yeah, I think it's great if we got our youth leaders to especially know they don't have to talk all the time. They're a facilitator. I think we could use different, uh, you know, names. I mean, I think it wouldn't be bad semantically to, to call it, to you're a small group facilitator and let them know you don't have to talk. We just want you to be able to ask these questions and get the conversation happening. Good, good question. Yes? I'm curious, how many are trained in facilitation of youth masters? Uh -huh. And if you're recommending resources for like, special facilitation training. No, that's interesting. I mean, I know that, like, for example, Precepts actually spends a lot of time talking about preparing their precept leaders. As for small groups, these specialties use. It's so funny, YS changes so often and they got new ownership again. It's actually nice, Josh and Doug are going to add the helm now along with Orange. So this session, this one will be interesting to see, but they usually have a session or two on small groups that will be one like this. I don't know if there's one particularly, here's facilitator training and how to do it. I really don't know, that's a good question though. Uh, if anybody knows someone, talk to them about that, because that's very interesting. I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, no, I, I think it's a good thing to, uh, I mean, I think there's some real basics of some of the stuff we talked about. Knowing you don't have to talk, using questions, letting one person talk at a time, that kind of stuff, I think that really helps. Because I'll tell you, name it, women's ministry, men's ministry, whatever, you also will have the one guy who's a big talker, the one person who wants to talk but never gets a chance to talk, so it's really neat to be able to kind of set those ground rules so it's hard to actually uh, it, it is, and I think with adult, I think with adults it can be harder because yeah. with kids, there's almost an implied authority, you know? So it's interesting with campus ministry kids, for sure. Because kids look at you like, I can stab you. They're like, oh, OK, yeah, that's true, that's true, you're good. All right, what else? Other questions? I got a question. How was lunch? Was it good? It looked good. As I sat there and watched you all eat it. No, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. One question is, how do you direct kids? Like, if they set the rules, or you set the rules, and then you're right in the middle, and you, even after calling them out, they still want to go on. Any suggestions? Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great question. How do you handle that tough kid who actually is still talking? Um, I think it's nice. I always say with middle school ministry, it's always nice we have two small group leaders. So one can actually go, come with me. And they're like, kind of do the, take them aside. 
The answer to any question I have with any kid with disciplinary issues is always meet with that kid one-on-one. -on -one. Because meet with a kid one-on-one -on -one is always so powerful. And if you went and said to Kenny, or in your case, Brianna, hey, Brianna, I could use your help. Is that her name? No, I'm just kidding. It's her and Oh, okay, that's right. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, Kelly. So you go, Kelly, I need your help. Yeah, uh, and say, I, I really, you know, my goal is to try to get, there's people in that group, I, you know, you can name you, who just don't get often a chance to talk. And I'd love it for you and me, who are natural talkers, to not talk as much and give her a chance. So I'm really going to count on you to not do it. And if she's still, after that time, do your best to, hey, hey, Kelly, you know, Sabrina was talking, you know. And if she's just out of hand, you got to go, Kelly, I asked you nicely last time. And pull her aside and say, I, I'm going to have to ask you not to come if you continue to do that. Because if one kid makes it awkward so eight other kids or you know five other kids can't talk, good. but handle one-on-one -on -one really nicely, you know, get through the group the first time, maybe, hey, hey, remember, if she's talking, remember, don't be you're being a turd. You smell like a turd right now. You know, so stop. You know, and, and do that a little bit, but then talk with one-on-one -on -one, see if that works. Does that help a little bit? How many of you guys had to do that before? It's always tough, huh? But you know what's cool? Sometimes those one-on-one -on -one times actually pay off. Sometimes, in fact, sadly, some kids act out because they want attention. I did all the time. And the thing is, um, I act out with my wife, so she'll give me attention. So, so the thing is, you know, um, so you can use, you know the kids are using that, and kids do want to meet one on one, and that's a powerful ministry tool. Okay, I promise you 130, 131, let me pray. Lord God, thank you so much for your love, and thank you for uh, what you were doing in the ministries of every man and woman in this room. God, help us and our leadership teams, our small group facilitators, everybody, Lord God, as we go and we have the opportunity to, to be a listening ear to kids. Help us to learn that balance um, as we're sharing truth and trying to facilitate conversation. And we really want to give kids an opportunity to just process and talk about it, God. Um, we, it's so obvious how bad we need you for this process. So God, we just give this to you, and I commission these men and women as they go out and uh, do this ministry. Thank you for all you do, Lord God, and we just thank you in advance for your baby season in your precious name. Amen.